Hello and welcome to Bob's Radio. My name is Rio Raymond. This is Artist Talk with us. And we've got another artist all the way from Delhi, Iman. I like that uh, grin on the face. You're holding your smile back, man. How are you doing? I'm good, buddy. I'm good. Nice to meet you. Finally. Welcome on board, finally. And uh, it's been a long time to get you on to talk to us. I believe you're a very, very busy person. Uh, either you're working during the weekdays and I think the weekends you're writing songs and belting it out somewhere. I have to apologize beforehand. I feel like I've been really bad with the communications and all. It's just, I, I don't know, something about Instagram really has not been, I've been very finding it very difficult to really get back. And I genuinely want to apologize for the... No, 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 it's absolutely I, fine. It's absolutely fine. You know, sometimes uh, the yeah. longer the delay, I think the sweeter the chat that happens. So it's okay. Don't have to apologize for delays, man. Delays are inevitable. So don't worry about that. I'm glad. I'm glad. But lovely work. I've been following your... <laughs> YouTube profile and like really fun people also like I, I've had a couple of friends who also have been recommending the, the page and it's really nice work that you do. Oh really? I'm glad yeah. we, get, we have people recommending as well man that's so sweet to hear. Absolutely. No no absolutely. You do. You do. Yes. But nevertheless uh, finally you're on board and you're you've just released a new song it's called Hom Homage. How do you like to pronounce it? Homage? Homage? Like a lot of people pronounce it in different ways. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the way I pronounce it in the song is homage. Anyway, um, it's, yeah, I think I call it homage. Right. So you're a Guwahati boy who's traveled from Guwahati to uh, Bombay, played music, plied your trade, now moved to Delhi. Is music full-fledged, full-time? It's very recently become a full-time thing. Um, I actually came to Delhi. I came to Delhi for my higher education right after school. And I came here actually as a history student. Okay. I came here to study history for a while. I wanted to do this side by side. Uh, I wanted to have a parallel career in music. Right. I know that I'll always have like a foot in one side of the world, which would be like more of the academic line that I was taking. And maybe the other foot I'd have in, in the world of music. But I think it's during COVID that I realized, I also did my master's here. And post-master's, I decided that maybe I have to work on it full time. And... Uh, I have been performing in Delhi for a while, but I never made a career out of it. So right. It's only during the COVID. Yeah. It's only around then that I decided to, okay, I need to make plans. I need to be sustainable and I have to make a lot of uh, plans even besides performance. So I decided to do audio engineering and production. I came back to Delhi again. Okay. And uh, yeah, and that's how it started. I think I started touring and performing and doing as much around music as possible. And... Yeah, now I think around a year or two has passed since I've probably decided to take this as a career. So since a year or two, I I mean, uh, just like a lot of people fail to understand uh, the the hard life that an artist has in terms of writing a song. It's not as easy as a lot of people think. What was your reason that took you time? Like, you know, to like once you decided, okay, it's going to be a full-time career. And I'm going to write this song. And it took so, so long for you as well. So what were your challenges? I think I always had uh, a couple of songs which were always in the pipeline for production. They're usually like, I plan on something, I try to execute it, and there's some hurdle or the other which comes my way. And it's just, it might be ill planning on my part, it might be circumstantial. It's something that always, like, it's been like, I mean, I mean I've mean, told this story to other people also, like, before releasing the song, it became like, my mental state came to that point where I'm literally on a flight uh -huh. and I'm like, the flight is having turbulence and I feel like, damn, I can't die without having released a song. You know, that's the first <laughs> thought that comes to my head. It was, it was that year. I think I waited for a while. Uh, there were a couple of other songs, which I decided as the first song. So Omash was not my first song initially when I started deciding to release something. Uh, but uh, it's, it's difficult. I think like once, I think one thing that I've realized over the last few years, in a way, is is that I think now if you're working in an individual and as an independent artist, I feel there's so many parts of the process which you yourself have to like have to take care of. Right. And there's, I mean, you can have good friends and all, like, but there's so many things around the release which I wasn't aware of, which I wasn't good at. So then I realized, oh, I have to take care of this also and that also. So all of those things turned out to be very time-consuming, very, I also feel very, uh, 
how do i say like i have to i'm very particular about like the way i have to get things out and a lot of artists feel that it's like the the song is like the baby right it's like their brain child so it takes a lot of time but i feel i also feel that now that one song is out what was next i feel more comfortable sharing them without as much thought like mm-hmm. without as much reservation i mean as much thought of course but like with less reservation than before that uh, Yeah, I hope I'm answering the question. Yeah, yeah, it's fine, man. Because you know, uh, yeah. the challenges are plenty for artists. You know, like a lot of them have don't find time. Some of them they, yeah. they just don't feel right with what's sitting through, and sometimes uh, they just don't like the lyrics they've written, and they keep rewriting them. So the plenty of challenges come through. With homage, I just want to understand: uh, is there is there a tribute to it? I feel like it's more like a tribute to something or somewhere in life, because that's how the lyrics and song also sounds like. So tell us a little bit about this tribute uh, that you pulled it through. Why are you asking such honest questions? Thank you. You're, you're very nice interviewer. <laughs> I must say. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, homage is is in a way a tribute, but it's it's more like the song is is a tribute to the people you grow up imitating or imbibing the values of. You know, like it might be, you know, it might be your parents. it might be your other family members it might be just a older sibling or a friend or a kind neighbor or right. somebody if you like uh, might be just a celebrity or a musician like somebody whose values you decide that okay this is what i want to become right there there are people who you aspire to be and that's how we grow up we grow up learning these kind of values trying to understand what how they became who they were and what to do in order to reach that Right. like a tribute to your role models to be precise yeah absolutely absolutely and there can be anybody right like your role models can come from any any part at any time of your life um it's who are your role models if i may ask <laughs> i mean this is also like a tribute to uh, i mean obviously the album art has my family members right and it's like one of the like is like obviously my family is i'm close to you my family of course in a very strong way and um it's also people outside of the family as much who have had a role in it's it's a thank you to them in a way um and the album art has the picture of my maternal family this is before i was born right and um every person there has in a way impacted who i am and they're all very down to earth very grounded very uh, homely people right very funny people as well so whatever little ounce of humor i have i am sure some of it comes from that so i have a lot of people to thank for and i i i wish this song came across as a thank you as a note of gratitude for them i'm sure you'd have also played the track out to a lot of friends and family around uh what was the kind of feedback that you got from them one person would say tone like the piano one person would be like your vocals are too weak to <laughs> it's like it's a very different kind of so i have one set of friends who i rely on like for mixed decisions and so i worked on the song like most of it like the production was my uh, like i worked on the production for the song i sent the song to uh, uh, to a friend michael and uh, and the mix and master i got from professionals so the production like for me to zero in on any production decision takes me a lot of i have massive imposter syndrome buddy like i have like oh god takes me a long time to like decide on something so i i sent it to a lot of songs over different stages and at some point um yeah a lot of my friends were very supportive but they were also very tired because i'm sending them like six seven drafts in a month <laughs> like i need you to like properly confirm this for me so uh yeah i do i do value their opinions a lot and they have really helped me get the sound right i don't know if this is sort of a validation for you i'll just tell you not this is not what i said so just before i got in connected with you i was just listening to the song we've not plugged it in an air yet because we had to finish the interview so i was listening to the song and of late we've been listening to a lot of international artists who have gotten on board and stuff right and uh, my friend was sitting on on the opposite side is like who international artist no from guwahati <laughs> <laughs> so that is some sort of validation you need just in case i mean yeah thank you i mean i i i would 
I would say that the people who I also uh, hold as role models for for my music, they are kind of equally dispersed, both globally and on a national level. So I mean, the people who are also, in a way, very direct musical uh, inspiration for this song, are actually people who are uh, artists and bands coming out of the Delhi circuit, from the Bombay right. circuit. So, uh, so I have to thank like national artists and like artists from within the community, right? So, as much as I have to thank artists, from, you know, outside. Uh, the circle. Now yeah. you've been writing a lot of songs, is what we also read about. You also spoke of it. You're like this uh, weekend. What do you say? Weekend recreational writer is what you don't call yourself because you've taken yes. a while to write these songs, and then now you finally have released a song. So in the pipeline, yeah. will we get to hear more songs produced? Or it's still going to be a, a long way till we get another song from Imon. Oh man, I want you to wish and pray for me, Rio. Like I want you to like probably. Bro, every artist wants you to do <laughs> like. That. <So> imagine. <laughs> I. <laughs> I'm, that's very sweet of you. Uh, I mean, I have like when I perform my own songs, like also I have to credit Bangalore for a lot of like. Are you based out of Bangalore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's very fantastic. I have so much to thank. My first tour uh, was last year, and I went to Bangalore. Best crowd loveliest audiences i just want to get that out of the way and secondly i feel like i have also because of the you know way of pressure and a responsibility of touring i wrote a lot of songs i prepared a lot of songs i have around like 12 to 13 songs that i perform just like Thanks. not just the four the ones that i have so it's just like it's been there in the pipeline uh at some point the pipeline also got stuck but now i'm working on a few productions that i already have and I will release, uh, I'll get one done by this month. So I think I should, I'm aiming for an August release. And that's also, my birth is around then. So I think I'll make it like a birthday release. Might be. Okay. Um, is it a birthday wish or a birthday release? What would you say? Sorry, is it a? Birthday wish or a birthday release? Birthday wish or a birthday release? <laughs> birthday wish. Oh, buddy, difficult to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see because how it goes. a lot of let's artists see, I know I... actually do release music on special occasions, one of them being birthdays. And uh, it's a special birthday, we're releasing a song. And it's a trend that's been followed. You always look for a special date because you want to yeah. give a certain timeline to finish that particular project that you're working on. And I guess if yeah. it, by then we get to release, uh, hear another song from Imon, why not? I'm hoping. I'm hoping it, it does come out soon. Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to that, man. And also, uh, you are all. Uh, you are also a music producer. Yeah, so, do you yeah. produce for other artists, like Ghost Productions, for others too? Um, not exactly Ghost Productions. I. I mean, I. I feel like again, like not. I'm not at the stage where I can be really choosy about the people I produce for. But thankfully, I have been uh, producing for a couple of artists who have also kind of become friends and whose whose work or whose style kind of resonates to the kind of stuff that I want to make, like as a producer. It's also kind of challenging. I'm currently working on uh, two productions. So there's one production, there's an artist, her name is Ladyfingers. And uh, I'm working on a production which is like very indie pop, which is not exactly my terrain. But it's also very exciting to work. And also, she's very, very talented. And it's fun. I, mean, I haven't done a lot of ghost productions. But uh, I am working with a couple of independent artists. Maybe. I'm sure and these I'm also sure. will give you a little bit of an insight and a wider spectrum of music uh, for you to put together in yours as well. Because I think the influences will oh, come from sure. perspective. Yeah? For sure. For sure. For sure. Yeah. I, mean, yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know. What, like... What, uh, yeah. the next song is going to be like I don't want to put a pressure on what's going to be a dance number is it going to be like a heavy guitar riffs and all of that no uh, it's your baby so whatever influences yeah, yeah. we'll just be influenced to play it I'm I'm a, I'm currently in my full sad boy era so I think you'll have a lot of like did you just have a breakup <laughs> like or something 
I'm I'm perpetually writing sad songs even in my happiest days. Like it's it there's a charm to a sad song, no? There's a charm like, to a sad a... song. There's also an audience yeah. for the sad song. Rather, there's a big audience for the sad song. Yeah, I but I'm I'm done with writing breakup songs. I think like long back in school I used to write. You don't want to listen to that though. Like it's it's like some terrible terrible stuff. But um, <laughs> I think like I I tend to write like most of my compositions. No matter what the musical style is, it's often very lyric oriented. Because right. again, I I enjoy songwriting, the the process of songwriting, and I enjoy delivering a certain kind of a vocal performance. So it's usually it's vocal centric and lyric centric. It can have like a different kind of arrangement. I try to uh, have a more wider um, assortment of sounds that I use. but usually most of my songs are geared towards uh, i like to write about the you know about themes of time about about hope about changes and and second chances like these are things that really like i feel important like just like omaraj omaraj is as much about time as much as it's about people it's also about you know my anxieties around time about things like aging about death you know these are things that keeps people awake at night it keeps me awake at night so there's a lasting theme it's not like it's sad or anything it's just like an observation on this. i mean uh, yeah so what so, you what you writing is yeah. like you know let's say uh, today's people are so stuck in social social media there is a reel for every subject of every situation today which was the mm-hmm. case with music at one point in time right now whether you come up with a song with something to do with death or you come out with love you come out with something to do with hope there's going to be an audience that will resonate with everything and somewhere i find or maybe i i have a firm belief that today because of the such a hard peppy you know fast tempo songs songs like yours which actually have a lot of depth in them try and get shooed away or rather shunned away right because of the fact that you you're so tuned to like okay i i need that song is nice because or you you only listen to a song that's really fast in numbers but these yeah. are the songs actually are helpful for someone's attention for someone's focus because yeah. you're not just listening to the musicality but you're also listening to the entire sound craft that is around in it and at the same time you're enjoying the vocals as well and you will once you read through the lyrics it tends to you know run a bit of a meaning into you too i i i agree i mean i agree in the sense that uh, i mean that's what the goal is that's what i am trying to aim for as in like i hope the listener takes a, like something which is a little different from what they usually consume it's not it's not like to create a sense of hierarchy in what is a better kind of music but i mean if it's my music my goal is to deliver my music and my words right like, like so the lyrical aspect of it and the musical experience of it and for me the lyrical aspect is very important because i feel like I have a lot to say within the songs that I offer. So for me, things like okay, I have to get the vocals right because if the vocals are not right, words are not clear. People will not hear anything. They will not get anything, and people will take way less than what I want them to take. So, I mean, that's the goal. That's the goal is for them to feel something different, take home, and feel like okay, this is something which is worth coming back to. You know, not just for yeah. a feeling of like a fleeting feeling of like joy but something that lasts a little longer than like just a fleeting moment you know like that that's the goal so uh yeah. the way we listen to music back then way we listen to music now is of course changed but it's not like at the end of the road you know you can always try and build on a structure and create a new musical culture of listening also and For sure. in times like this i think songs like yours have a big role to play i'm being very honest about this because this is what could change the way people could listen to music it should not be the same okay i'm going to listen to a song make a real out of it and go back songs music has always been very intense to a lot of people where it changes people's lives health and in many ways you know various emotions are attached to it and i think when you start giving you know your 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 mind and your heart to different genres of music you tend to explore yourself a little more and also get to be better in not just listening to music but also consuming it the right way yeah yeah so we look forward Thanks to saying that yeah 
I mean, I'm being very so very honest about it, man. Like I I speak to a lot of artists, right? So we know the kind of music that comes in, the kind of numbers that are going on, and the reason there is a lot of songs being made like this, right? So for example, I'll give you a a a hint, okay? Like like an example of the IPL just went by. The song that you always heard about, you know, that whenever Dhoni walks in or a Dhoni reel is played, there's one particular song in Tamil that's been played out. Okay, it resonates with you. It drives emotion. It's not a fast beat number at all. It's just pure vocal, you know, potential that has been maximized. And at the same time, it's not fast beat. It's very graceful rhythm that is coming through. And whatever background you put into it as a video, it'll still sound amazing and make you feel good. So that is what slow music can do. That's true. That's true. Right, good which I see is always yeah. Any day, man. Like, uh, yeah, I'm not yeah. saying percussions and you know the hardcore beat songs are bad, but I think at times we also need to look at consuming music in a different way than we're already structured to, because now we're listening to music the way people, the way platforms are making us listen to music, not how we should actually listen to music. So I think that change will come in when you bring out more Iman uh, tracks through. <laughs> oh man, you're giving me a full vigilante role here. Like <laughs> I'm giving you like pressure, bro. Like you don't take uh, two years, like one song. <laughs> but nevertheless, that's we're very, looking forward to uh, your birthday because that's when you're going to release the next song. So we can't wait to get our own book. Stick to your craft. Yeah. Stick to what you believe in, and I'm sure you will see. I won't say great heights alone, but also great. Changes and changes changing people's lives with the music as well. Thank you so much, Leo. That's a very sweet thing to say. Also, you you look like you're very honed in in your own craft, and I wish you a lot of good luck for your radio. This is this has been a very much like a very good experience talking to you. And uh, yeah, it's I I I don't know where like it's always very difficult to predict where and. artistic journey will like which direction an artistic journey goes like i never thought like few years back that i'll be doing this for a living you know um but i think there are a lot of artists who are striving to do this to take a good melody to take some good words and make something craft something meaningful and i i see a lot of hope in the future in uh you know in the kind of uh works that i see coming out like whether it's my friends work or whether it's in general like stuff coming out of you know not just metropolitan cities but also like from back home in guwahati in assam and like from different parts of the country i feel like people are really finding means to deliver something or create something which is unique impactful and very memorable and yeah. um, um thank you again for having these kind of conversations i feel like these conversations around music is as important as the music itself because there should be dialogue there should be people talking about what they hear and it should not be just another product that people are hearing so um yeah thank you again it's for, for your the work. day the day we start giving music is due importance music will really be what music is and also Absolutely. another thing to you know hold on to you know which i wanted to tell you was we all are struck by a social media norm right and i think oh. for us to get out of that it is uh it's an upheaval task but i'm not saying it's impossible it's only about how you start looking at your craft and focus on your craft and not let a platform dictate your craft and what you need to do so as yeah. long as that for sanity sure. prevails sure. i don't think uh you're going to go away from what you have to do because a lot of artists are facing this and are kind of you know stressing out and not hitting numbers because a lot of gigs and labels are all based on the numbers you accumulate on social media uh we'll try our best to try and push as much as we can by ourselves it's always a pleasure to focus on independent like i said, i always believe this the future is about being independent and not being dependent on uh what do you say a label or an agency because at the end of the day i i spoke about this to another artist as well i'm so proud of labels from back in the day and the managers and uh, you know artist promoters as well back in the day there was no tech but still without all of this they made music go global to all corners of the earth now that yeah. is what i call artist management and you know record labels what is there today is somewhere breathing into what the whole social media world is telling them to do 
So it's been a yeah. pleasure chatting with you, man. I'm going to wish you the best for the next track that's coming through. And uh, Thank you so much. hopefully we keep connecting more. And through you, we keep connecting a lot more artists too. Absolutely. 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 Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. That is mine. Cheers, Bhagav.